Yo, what's good guys? Been a little minute, but we are back on the grind. We are back committed to uh, playing the show, getting videos out to help you guys. And uh, today is going to be a follow-up to one of my earlier videos, how to pitch like a World Series player. Obviously, that skipped some steps. Um, doesn't really help low-ranked players that much. Uh, you know, people in 400, 500 probably shouldn't be tunneling. Um, so this is going to touch over some basics um, about sequencing, where to throw pitches, what pitches should be thrown in order, um, and stuff like that, right? So some credentials, you can see we are 53-2 and two on the year, and our ERA is well below average for our division, right? Uh, it is offset. We do not have a 1.4 ERA. We have a 4.9 ERA. I don't know why the leaderboards do that. But you can see other guys that are, you know, of similar skill level, other World Series guys, top 50 guys, stuff like that, um, they they don't have these ERAs, right? There's a couple people that have low fours, but in general, um, you know, I consider myself a very, very, very good pitcher, um, a better pitcher than I am a hitter. Um, so I'm going to teach you guys how to get like that, how to be like that. Um, and it begins with custom practice. Um, pitching practice is not exactly anywhere close to hitting practice. Um, pitching practice, you only need like one session, sit down for 30 minutes, learn pinpoint. Pinpoint is the best way to pitch. Um, it has gotten better since the start of the year. It is still the best way to pitch. Uh, it was then and it still is. So you come to pitching practice. I would recommend somebody like Corbin Burns, somebody that pitches out the stretch. Um, because if you can do it with the fast motion, you can do it with any motion. Just kind of work on your pinpoint. If you are struggling with your pinpoint, um, you know, it highlights what area you are struggling in. You can see we are early uh, on our pitch release. So the way you would do that is just drag down later. Um, but this is not about the basics of pinpoint. I do have a video on that if you guys do want that. This is about where you should be throwing pitches and then what sequence you should be doing it. Right, so um, I do have this little resource right here. Um, I made this a couple years ago when some friends of mine were getting into the show. Um, this is not it. Here we are. All right, so you can see I've broken down each primary pitch type. Obviously, there are variations. Uh, a cutter is almost very similar to a normal fastball unless it's thrown way slower. Uh, I did differentiate the sinker because in the show, the sinker is probably the best pitch in the game every year. So I do think it's a little bit different than your primary fastball. Slider is almost like a cutter. Um, you could consider a cutter more similar to a slider than it is a traditional fastball. Um, and then we have our changeups and our curveballs, right? So that can be broken down into fastballs, which would be like your fastball, sinker, cutter, uh, running fastball, but nobody has that. Um, you have your breaking balls, right? These are pitches made to make hitters swing and miss. Those are like your sliders, um, sliders, curveballs, uh, any variation of those two. And then you have your off speed, which are meant to make your hitter be early and typically cause weak contact. Those are like your change ups, your Vulcan change, your fork balls, your splitters, stuff like that. So, you can see I have coordinated on this chart where they should go. Um, black is a fastball. Green is a sinker. Red is a slider. Uh, blue is a changeup. And pink are your curveballs. Um, I will leave this resource. I will link it in the description if you guys want to download it. If you want to have it pulled up while you're playing, it's never a bad idea. But, uh, in general, I would just say kind of memorize this. Um, there are exceptions to the rule. There are times where maybe a hung curveball is a good pitch but i would encourage you guys to not be that guy that sits here and you know throws curveballs down the middle just to be weird just to be edgy uh it might work for an inning or two but i promise you uh it will not pay off long term in the game so uh in general right cutter you can throw it kind of as a slider or a fastball you can see uh, a front door cutter is very effective especially against better players they read it as being like a sinker or a normal fastball, and usually it's a take. A little bit out of practice with our pitching. Um, you can see Corbin Burns also has a slider, right? Where are we throwing the slider? We're throwing it front door against good players, and against bad players, we're throwing it 
back door off the plate. A, a way I typically teach how to throw a slider is put it in the corner and then kind of draw a line straight out of that corner box. And that's probably going to entice most lower ranked players to swing at it. You can get some higher ranked players to swing at. Another good spot for sliders this year is right here. Um, I would not say hang them per se, uh, but if you can hit that spot just out the zone, sliders away from same handedness hitters tend to shrink the PCI. It's a good pitch this year. Uh, and, you know, if you are somebody with a cutter, they might read it wrong. They might drop under it. It might be a pop up. Uh, they might get on top of it. They might ground out. So that's a very good pitch. So our change ups, change ups are typically thrown on either the far inside far outside, or in the dirt, right? Uh, do not throw change-ups here. I see a lot of people throw change-ups here, and they get very mad when your opponent slams their PCI and hits it for a single up the middle. Uh, that is not where you want to be putting it. I'd say right about there is where you can usually get very weak contact. Um, but the idea of a change-up is you either want your opponent swinging through it, or you want them to be early and pull it for weak contact. Uh, curve balls, right? Do not throw curve balls all the time. Um, it is pretty much every pitcher's worst pitch. It is the worst pitch in the game. Uh, they don't get punished as much as they probably should, but it just it, they give the hitters so much time. The only good curve balls are the really hard curve balls, like 85 miles an hour plus, um, and most pitchers don't have those, and even those aren't exactly fantastic. Um, they're just so readable. And if your opponent reads a different pitch, like a changeup, they're still going to hit the curveball. Uh, it's not a good pitch. It can be mixed in effectively, but if you're throwing a curveball more than one or two times an inning, uh, that's probably a red flag. I would not be doing that. Um, sinkers, right? Sinkers. This is the most important pitch in the game. If you can get starting pitchers in your rotation or bullpen pitchers, doesn't really matter, that throw 96 mile an hour plus sinkers, um, it's going to be really bad for your opponent. Uh, sinkers are probably the hardest pitch to time in the game. If you end up on a bad server, or God forbid, if your opponent has a pitcher that throws an outlier sinker and that outlier procs, um, it's impossible to time them up. They have a different timing than a traditional fastball throwing the same speed. It's the reason the sinker is always the best pitch in the game. Um... And that is Corbin's basic pitches. It almost covers all our pitch types. Uh, you know, there's not any crazy variations of the changeup. He throws a very fast changeup. Um, I wouldn't worry about two seams or anything like that. So let's get into sequencing, right? What would a traditional sequence look like? Um, try not to be too predictable in your sequencing. You do not want to necessarily let your opponent know what you're throwing. Um, but a general good rule is, you know, look at real life, right? Most successful MLB starting pitchers throw first pitch strikes around 65 to 85% of the time, somewhere in there. That's probably where you want to be, right? You want to be ahead in the count. You want to be commanding the game. Your job while pitching is to make the hitter react to what you're doing. Keep him on the back foot. The moment it's the other way, you've lost the at-bat. So try to get ahead in the count try to work account we'll get in a simulated game here and i will pitch how i would pitch an at bat right so pena not a great swing uh kind of close to the plate what i would probably do is hit him with an inside sinker it's a tough pitch to throw accurately especially with a rake team guy like corbin burns you can see that par is huge we're probably on legend pitching we are um all-star will give you guys a better idea of what you'll be looking like online. So you can see that's how we start the at-bat. And then from here you have a lot of options, right? Circle changes look very much so like sinkers. Um, a slider away is almost never a bad option. Um, curveball would be a bad option here. So, or you could double down and throw another sinker, right? So for me, I'm going to throw another sinker. That's a bad pitch. Bled over the middle of the plate. Um, not what you want to be doing, right? You do not want to be gifting your opponent stuff like that. If they are down in the count, be careful with what you throw. I see way, way, way too many times. Let's see if we can get there. There's one. I feel like Tucker will probably swing on this. He pops up. 
I see way too many times online. I'm guilty of it too. Uh, you know, I grind a lot against CPU, uh, be that many seasons, moments, conquests, you know, whatever. And a lot of times, if I'm playing somebody that's not great and I'm not really locked in, I will just constantly three pitch my opponent. Um, it's usually what I mean by that is throw three strikes in a row to them and just know that they can't hit it, uh, like you're pitching to the CPU pretty much. Uh, you don't want to do that. You do not want to be doing that. It gets too predictable. Um, too many times online, let's say the count's 0-2 right here, and I see, you know, something like this. A hung changeup right down the middle. Um, not a good pitch. Not a good pitch. That's called bailing your opponent out, right? They hit poorly up to that point. They're in an 0-2 count. You do not want to give them something they can hit hard. If they swing at it, you want them to either strike out or make weak contact. Um, if you're giving them something they can barrel in the 0-2 count, you're going to not be in a good spot whatsoever. So try to limit damage. Try to not allow your you know opponent. 2-0 is a scary spot for a pitcher, right? The, the batter basically knows you have to throw a strike. Um, so really, the worst thing you can probably do is throw a fastball down the middle. I would not advise throwing get-me-overs, right? Do not... Don't be like, it's a 3-0 count, he's not going to swing, I'm just going to throw this fastball right down the middle. Uh, that's a bad idea, right? What I would do is try to miss big, right? So you see the par size. Let's do a sinker, right? It's going to have the biggest par. You see the par, right? Assuming you throw a perfect, it can end up anywhere in that gray region. So what we kind of want to do is minimize our chances of missing. So this is not great. It's pretty much right down the middle. This will be an acceptable pitch in a 3-1 count. You can see we forced a weak contact. We got him to overextend and be early on the outside sinker. Um, and that's because we did not throw it down the middle. Uh, you know, he was in a 3-1 count. He thought he would get something good that he could hit no matter what. And, you know, we changed timing. We changed zone. We did not throw it down the middle. That's a key to success. Um, general sequencing, there's a lot of different ways to sequence. You can sequence with tunneling. You can sequence just off speed. Um, a lot of people will throw like fastball, off speed fastball, or fastball breaking ball, off speed. Um, you know, a tradi the very traditional pitch sequence is fastball to get ahead in the count, uh, off speed to either force weak contact or get another strike off like a foul tip or something, and then breaking ball to get a three pitch strike out. Um, but I did say something against that. Do not three-pitch your opponent. This year, a lot of times, people will go down 0-2 and just be taking no matter what. And if you recognize your opponent's doing that, then yeah, start three-pitching them. Start making them get aggressive. And then when you're in 0-2 counts in the future, uh, you know, throw them some balls, he'll swing at them. Um, but pitching's really a mind game. It's about making the hitter react to you. If you can, you know, get inside a hitter's head and know what he's looking for, uh, you can do that with swing timings, right? If your opponent's early on a 96 mile an hour cutter, they're probably looking for an outlier fastball. If they're early on a, you know, 90, 88 mile an hour splitter, they're probably looking for like your primary fastball or something like that. So uh, be careful, pay attention to your opponent's timing, pay attention to how it comes off the bat, right? Pay attention to how the ball comes off the bat. You can often tell where your opponent's PCI was by what the foul ball looked like. You know, we get a ton of foul balls. Um, use that to your advantage, right? If it comes off the bottom of the bat, they're probably on top of it. They're probably slamming um, if it's way out of them. Uh, is it a pop-up that barely didn't get caught? They're probably under it. They're probably slamming their PCI, and they just over-adjusted. So use that information uh, to become a better pitcher. Really get inside your opponent's mind. Uh, pitching's fun when you get to this point. We can get in somebody's head and play mind games and, you know, throw them three fastballs in a row and they strike out and you just know they're so mad. Um, that's a good feeling, and it is comparable to hitting a perfect perfect. I don't think it'll ever really live up to that hype, but um, if you pitch enough, you will find some enjoyment in it. Uh, if you can be throwing perfect to a pinpoint eight out of ten times, you're in a great spot. You're going to have a lot of success online. And, yeah, guys, so that's it. Uh, we'll be looking to get some more videos out. Uh, sorry about the extended break, but I should be good to go now. And, uh, yeah, guys, so if this was helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. Peace.